back. In this part, we are going to be learning about these about seven of the different connective tissue types. Okay. And the one we are going to start with first is a real connective tissue. So make sure you say that word, a real. Okay, because if you can't pronounce it, you can't spell it. So the word is a real or connective tissue. And this is the one that we've been showing for um, all the cartoon drawings so far. This is the one that is the most widespread throughout your body. Um, you can clearly tell it's connective tissue. It's got a scattering of cells, but it's mostly not cells. There's a lot of space, inner tissue space. It looks like the inside of a lady's purse. Super disorganized, okay? However, this one keeps things in place. It connects tissue. So like between your skin and your muscle, you're going to have a real or connective tissue. You're going to have the surrounding everything. Okay? And because of that, it is by far the most common type. Even in your skin, you have a real or connective tissue. So here is the upper part of your skin where we have epithelium. And this, do you see all this looseness going on in there? We've got a lot of areola, sorry, this is not skin, I take that back. Um, but we have a lot of areola connective tissue. Um, compare these pictures to this, okay? Do you see how on the pictures on the right, it looks a lot denser, there's not so much space? Well, this is called dense connective tissue. And dense connective tissue doesn't have a whole lot of interstitial space because there, it is chock full of fibers, not cells, but fibers, okay? So these have lots of collagen, meaning it has lots of strength, okay? And a places where we have a dense connective tissue, um, the way that those fibers align give it the strength. So if you look in the picture on, on the right, what you will notice all these fibers are aligned in essentially one direction, which means all the strength is in that direction. The picture on the bottom right, in case you're interested, this is the picture of this part of your forearm and it's showing the muscles going to tendons because tendons are made out of dense connective tissue. But just like we have six types of connective tissue, we actually have subtypes of dense connective tissue. We have what we call dense regular connective tissue and dense irregular connective tissue. And so in dense regular connective tissue, the fibers are all aligned in the same direction. So our maximum strength is in one direction and there's no strength in the other direction. And so classic examples of these are our tendons connecting our muscles to the bone and our ligaments which connect bones to bone. They're also found in things called aponeurosis and fascia, which we are not gonna learn about for a while. So you don't have to know those two words for this first in comparison to dense regular connective tissue and dense irregular connective tissue, we can see muscle, sorry, not muscle, we can see the collagen fibers in multiple directions. Like these right here are going between like one and seven o'clock and these are going 10 to four o'clock. You know, some of them are more horizontal, some are more vertical, they go all different directions. Okay? And that gives us strength in many directions. So this is what we have going on in our deeper layer of our skin, around our joints, in that pericardium, and covering some of our soft organs, such as our spleen and our kidneys. They're gonna have dense, irregular connective tissue. Now, if you notice, these are chock full of collagen, so they don't have very many vessels bringing nutrition in them. So it makes them slow to heal. So tendons and ligaments definitely are gonna heal a lot slower than an injury to a bone, for instance. The next type of connective tissue is reticular connective tissue. And I wanna talk about this one because this one is also chock full of fibers, but they're not collagen fibers that are big, giving it lots of strength. These are these tiny little delicate wispy fibers, the reticular fibers. 
And so these are found mostly in organs of the cardiovascular and lymphatic system because those have a lot of blood cells in them. And so blood cells don't offer much structure. And so we are loaded with reticular fibers. And it requires a special stain for you all to see these, this, all these little tiny black things. Those are your reticular fibers. Okay. Um, so we will come back and talk more about that um, when we're about halfway through the course and we learn about the cardiovascular and lymphatic system. <coughs> Excuse me. The next type of tissue is adipose tissue, which is the real name for fat. And when we look at adipose tissue, what happens is when we process the tissue for staining it in the light microscope, basically the cells are 99% full of lipid because they store lipids, they store fat. Okay. And so when we look at them under the microscope, they look hollow because all of that lipid has been washed out and all you see is the little outline of the cell the nucleus is smushed, all the organelles are smushed out to the outside. Now, adipose tissue has a robust blood supply because this is where we have our storage of extra glucose. And this is where if we need a release of glucose, we are going to break down the stored lipid and uh, release it into the bloodstream. And so we find an adipose tissue under the skin because it helps keep us warm. And we also find it surrounding organs, especially the kidney. The next type of tissue is cartilage, which is mostly collagen, but the matrix can have a lot of water in it. Um, that ground substance is about 80% water, which allows it to spring back after you compress it. And we have three different types of cartilage. The cartilage that we're referring to when we're not mentioning any other type is this type of cartilage, which looks kind of like sea glass. It has a ground glass appearance. And then you can see these cells, which appear to be surrounded by these spaces. That's because they are surrounded by spaces. Each cell and cartilage has its own little private hot tub surrounding it. And so this type of cartilage is known as hyaline cartilage. This is what we have at all of our joints where they are articulating with each other, where the bones are articulated with each other. The next type of cartilage is called elastic cartilage. And so it requires a special stain so you can see the elastic fibers. But do you notice when we are looking at the cells, you can still see the little hot tubs surrounding each of these cells. It doesn't matter which of the three types of cartilage. They're all gonna have the spaces surrounding the cells. And the third type of cartilage is one that we throw in a bunch of extra collagen. And so it's called fibrocartilage. One word, not fibrous cartilage, but fibrocartilage. And so you're gonna see lots and lots of collagen, but you're still gonna be cell, see cells surrounded by their little hot tubs. And that's how you know it is cartilage. So we did adipose, we did areolar, we did dense regular and irregular, we did reticular, and now we've done the three types of cartilage. So we need some B ones. And the first one is bone. If we were to cut a bone in half longitudinally, this is your femur, so this is by your pelvis up there. What you see when you look at the bone is the outer part of the bone looks pretty solid, whereas the deeper parts of the bone kind of look like a sponge. And so that gives us two types of bone, two structural types. This outer part is called compact bone and this inner part is called spongy bone. And so they are gonna look different from each other under the microscope. So compact bone is real easy to tell because it looks like it has all these tree trunks that have been cut in half. Okay. This is a special structure called the osteon, which we're gonna learn about in both lab 
pretty soon and lecture once you come back and you start the skeletal system, which is coming up as the second organ system. So this is compact bone. In comparison to that, all these tiny little spicules in the spongy bone are just that. You just have all these tiny, very disorganized looking things, and that is spongy bone. Which brings us to our last type of connective tissue, and that is blood. In this one, the ground substance is liquid, okay? And so remember um, that extracellular matrix is fibers and ground substance. And so the extracellular matrix in blood is called plasma, which is not the same as serum, because serum is just the ground substance once the fibers have been taken out. So you don't normally see fibers in the blood on a normal blood smear because the fibers come into play when we're doing blood clotting, which we'll talk about when we hit the cardiovascular system. So this is a normal picture of what blood looks like where we have all of these cells, which are red blood cells. And then these larger cells, these are going to be white blood cells. And then all these tiny little things, these are platelets. So we'll come back and learn a lot more about that later on. So looking at connective tissue, we've kind of gone through seven types of connective tissue. And so now what I really want you to do, once I'm done talking, I tell you, is I want you to stop this video and I want you to go through these eight different things or these seven types of connective tissue and realize that connective tissues can be the answer to one or more of one or none of these. So you need to stop and think. And I want you to write down which ones do you think belong to each. And so we can talk about it if you've got any questions. So go ahead and freeze it now before we come back. Okay, welcome back. So I really hope you are doing this. And for this one, I'm going to give you answers, but I want you to realize for a lot of these, I'm not going to be giving you answers. So here are some answers to those. And if you have any questions about it, feel free to ask me when we meet again the next time. And the last thing I want you to do, because I want you to find partners today, is I want you to do what we call a DWAP, a discuss with a partner. And here are the three things you're going to do. You're going to name the components of all connective tissue. So kind of go in your outline form. Once you have done that, name the major subtypes of connective tissue, the seven ones we have talked about and then go back to pictures of connective tissue. Go back and explain why that picture is that type of connective tissue and not the other type, because that is what's going to solidify the information. And once you've done that, then go back to the first six pictures at the beginning and try to name those six. And with that, we are done with this section on connective tissue, and I will see you again soon. And thank you for please doing these exercises with me because we would be doing these if we were meeting in person. Thank you.